what's up? Today I'm coming at you with another Snapseed tutorial. So I wanted to preface this tutorial with the fact that Snapseed is only good for removing one person or small objects and not a crowd of people. If you're looking to remove a large group of people, I would recommend Photoshop over Snapseed. Sometimes I like to use the patch tool in Facetune to clean things up a bit. So if you wanted to see a tutorial on that or how I remove people in Photoshop, just let me know in the comments. <laughs> All right, let's get started. The first step is the healing tool. It's gonna to remove unwanted objects or people from your shot. There's three people in this picture that I'd like to remove, but I'm gonna show you on this guy over here. It's not too bad. As you can see, the pole is completely removed. Edges are a little jagged, but if you just go over them, you can kind of even them out a little bit. I find that when you're doing it in tiny areas, it makes it a lot easier to control versus doing like a big blob at once. I'm gonna leave it at that for now. So I'm gonna go ahead and click the check mark. Of course, we're not gonna leave it like this because there's obviously a missing gap in the photo where the pole used to be. In the second step, we're gonna use double exposure to add the pole back. You can use this tool for a variety of different reasons. I like to use it to add extra grain to make my photo appear more vintage. You can also use it to change the background completely. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to recreate the missing pole. So let's go to tools, double exposure, click on the left bottom icon to add an overlay. And what we're going to do is use the exact same photo that we're using to edit. And as you can see, you can rotate it, you can scale it to whatever size you want. In this case, I'm going to try to line up the pole from the overlay photo to the original. That's a pretty good match. Now I'm gonna go ahead and click the teardrop icon on the right. This is where you can change the opacity of your overlay. Because the pole is opaque, I'm going to set the opacity to 100%. And this is where you can also check the placement of the pole so that everything kind of is in check. So once everything is good to go, go ahead and click the check mark. Now don't be alarmed with your missing original photo. We're gonna go back and fix things. So let's go to the undo tool. But instead of clicking undo, we're gonna go to view edits, click on the double exposure that you just added and click on the middle icon. Here is where you can adjust the opacity of the overlay that you just added. So in this case, if you click the little yin yang symbol on the left, it will show the outline of the photo that you just added on top of the original one. And you want the double exposure to be at zero because what we're gonna do is we're going to erase everything but the pole that we're adding. As I'm erasing the overlay, the original photo comes back into appearance. And you can also zoom into the photo so that you get a more precise erase line. And I'm gonna make sure that I'm not erasing the pole. And I like to do this when I'm on the go or when I'm traveling, especially if I don't have my laptop on me. Obviously using Photoshop will be a lot quicker and you'll probably get a more precise removal. This is just one of the ways. And it doesn't have to be perfect. I'm a little bit of a perfectionist, so I like to zoom in and go right to the edge just so I know I'm not missing anything. But because the photo is a little a bit far in this case it really doesn't matter too much I'm gonna keep erasing keep erasing now if you find that you erased an area like so that you didn't want to erase you just increase the exposure up to a hundred and go over the same area that you accidentally erased and it'll come right back so even if you make a mistake you can always fix it real easily all right there you go that looks like it's about good to go so I'm gonna go ahead and check and click on the check mark that's not too bad. You know, if I zoom out, it looks like the pole was always there and there never was a person to begin with. But because I'm such a perfectionist, you can see here with the jagged sidewalk, if you wanted to clean up the edges, you can. I'm gonna go ahead and do that. So click on the healing tool again. We're gonna see if we can clean up the sidewalk a little bit. It still looks a little bit rough. If you still wanted to clean things up a little bit more, what I like to do is I like to use the brush tool. So because this area is darker than the actual sidewalk in the original photo, I'm gonna use the dodge and burn tool and lighten the area. And then to ensure that the lines are a little bit smoother, I'm gonna turn dodge and burn down to negative 10 and see if I can kind of darken edges a little bit. You must just adjust it to however you'd like until you're completely satisfied with your removal. So I pull down on the photo before, 
after. Honestly, that's a pretty good job without Photoshop. <laughs> I must say myself. So there you have it. That's one way to remove a person in Snapseed using only two tools, heel and double exposure. If you're lucky, you don't even have to use a double exposure tool, you can just use healing. So don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. If you want more Snapseed tutorials, let me know in the comments what tutorials you'd like to see. And I just wanted to give a shout out to all of my 6,000 subscribers. I started YouTube in January and never in a million years did I think that I would be blessed with all of y'all following along my journey. So thank you. And so this follow-up Snapseed tutorial is dedicated to all of y'all. Lastly, if you haven't already, please subscribe and join the best family on YouTube. And with that, I will see you guys next week or in a couple weeks. Okay, bye. Okay, bye.